One of the biggest problems we solve as tech specialists is the fact that people don't really understand domains and how to fix their domain issues. So what we're gonna do today is take a deep dive into domains to make sure you understand them foundationally because the likelihood of you having a domain issue with one of your clients or yourselves is gonna be pretty high. So the first thing that we're gonna do is understand what a domain is. A domain is an address, is an address on the internet. Now, back in the day when people didn't have the internet, you would write your friend a letter by putting their name and the address they lived in, put it in the mailbox, the mailbox service, UPS, mail, whatever it is, even the Pony Express back in the day, would take that letter and deliver it to the address that was on the paper. Well, now you have the internet and you have a domain. A domain is an address on the internet, very plainly put. It's basically the directions of where your name is or where your space on the web is so people can go ahead and find you. Now, in order for you to get a domain, you have to buy it from a domain service provider like GoDaddy, Namecheap, Google, and a whole mess of others. It would actually be impossible for us to name because there are so many different providers that have these available out there. And there's different ways and way you have to navigate to get to what you need inside the domain service provider. Buying a domain is fairly simple. You go to either the GoDaddy, Namecheap, or Google to buy your domain. Once you purchase it, that's when the real fun begins. Now, I'm not gonna kind of go over the video of how to buy a domain. There's plenty of ways to do that on the internet. We actually have a couple of videos that you can sort later on if you really need that. But what's important is understanding the anatomy of a domain, right? So up on the screen, right, you'll see, we buy a domain to, an, uh, to a service provider. And if you have an existing domain attached to another site, you're always better off buying a new domain for $12 a year, not uh, with a whole lot of extra configuration and everything else, it just makes it really super simple. When we take over clients inside a high level, the issue is that these clients already have an existing domain somewhere on a website, or sometimes they don't even know that they do because they don't understand what a domain is. So understanding and asking the right questions to clients is the first step. One, do you have an existing website and is it up? And if they say yes, then you already know that that domain is being used for that site. Now, you can create a subdomain to use with the software or you can use the main domain, but just understand the main domain will bring the site down or wherever it is existing in to bring it back up in, into the proper software, which is here. Now, using a subdomain is a really good alternative because it doesn't disturb what's there while you rebuild or while you do some other funnels or while you have some other functions in there. And nine times out of 10, people really don't want their domain down because they have a lot of history there and there's stuff and there's active customers going in there. So the first thing you gotta understand is what a domain root domain is and what a subdomain is. This, if I go in up over over here and I type in nuno.com, that is an actual domain. It's a root domain, meaning it is the core domain that I bought. Now, you have a lot of ends to it. It could be co, it could be US, it could be uh, site, it could be tech, it could be IO. We always recommend staying within the confines of com, co, and maybe US. Everything after that becomes really kind of, just doesn't really work with, uh, well with pretty much anything else. And then it's harder for people to find. IO is also pretty big in the technology world. A lot of people do IO. Now all of that is, is good, but again, you still need to understand. This is the end or the destination. This is your route. And this kind of guides it where on the net it's gonna be. That is your address. The thing to understand is a subdomain, everybody makes it overly complex and it's really honestly not. Think of nuno.com has my house. This is my house on the internet. When I wanna create a subdomain and I don't wanna disturb the main house, I can rent a room to a different software. Now, when it comes to domains, you can't have to a domain existing in two different softwares. For instance, I can't have a WordPress site under nudo.com and create a, a website inside of high level at nudo.com. It's gonna conflict and the addresses are like, wait a second, this already exists somewhere else. I can't create this particular address. It's very hard to configure things like that and you don't wanna ever do that, it's just really bad practice. But what I can do is I can rent a room, a subdomain inside of my house. So in order to create a subdomain, it's easy, as easy as adding a, a record, one record, like an A record or a C name record. And you can come in here, go dot is now a subdomain. Now dot is an actual subdomain. Funnels dot is an actual subdomain. Anything before the domain is a subdomain. 
And that is basically different things that you can rent inside your house. The only quality and the only thing that you have to always keep in mind, you can have two subdomains named the same thing. So for instance, if I take that little room, right, and I'm gonna rent it out to high level, and I'm gonna create funnels.nuno.com, I can't create in another software funnels.nuno.com because it's all pointing to high level. Now, when I say pointing, that's how it, it literally your records will point to the software that it's hosted on. And for instance, if your site is hosted on WordPress, nine times out of 10, you're pointing the records, which we're gonna get into in a second, to that WordPress site. And then you're pointing the funnels.nuno.com to high level, which is hosting that. So subdomain, main root domain, and finally, there's something called paths. Forward slash Nuno is a path. Nuno 123 is a different path. Each path is gonna be different. Each page can have a simple path. But the rule again with here, along with all these other rules, is that you can't have the same path existing in the same place at the same time. So there's always gonna be a requirement that when you're creating a path, it just can't be something, a page or a path that you've created prior. So for instance, you ever notice that for people that are creating funnels on our norm, if you ever notice that you're, when you create a page, it adds a couple of weird numbers in the back end, like you'll add a couple of numbers like this. The reason it does that, or probably usually with a dash, the reason it does that is because it's saying, hey, I tried to add forward slash Nuno, but when I did, I see that it exists somewhere in the software. Therefore, I can't give you that address. I'm gonna have to create a new one. So it randomly creates those numbers and adds it to the end. This is again, a very confusing part because a lot of people can't, uh, can't understand this. So subdomain, root domain, and finally the path. And you know now know that the root domain can only exist in one place. It can't exist in several, meaning one software, right? So whether it's Kajabi, whether it's ClickFunnels, whether it's high level, whether it's WordPress, the root will always exist in one of those. However, if I want to still use that same, but give them a little room to rent somewhere else in some other software, I can create as many subdomains as I want. And we'll go over how to do that in a second. Now, to kind of cover it, again, here's your root. There's your subdomain, go, believe it or not, www is a subdomain. And both of them are there, and then you have the root right here. Now, it's important to note that when creating an A record, you usually want to use an A record for the root and a C name for the subdomain. Now, the reason that is, I'm going to get what all these records are. The reason that is, is because it's just a proper way to do things. But every now and again, the C name will give you records. We'll give you, a, not records, I'm sorry. We'll give you an issue. So all you have to do is just create an A record instead. And we're going to get creating the records in a minute. And then uh, redirecting domains, we're going to get into that. But that's going to be the more advanced theory. All right, now that we got the core of understanding of what a domain is, and again, that it's an address, what we want to go do now is manage the records and start understanding the records piece of it. All right, so we know what a subdomain is, we know what a root domain is, and we know what a path is. And we know they all can't exist in one place at the same time, regardless of which form that they're in. So now what we're going to do is manage the records, which is basically the instructions that the domain service provider points and says, hey, if you need to find this address, here's where it is. So for instance, the first one we'll go to is we're going to go over to our a GoDaddy account. And when you go to GoDaddy, you'll pretty much end up in this screen right here. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select one of my domains. I'm going to come in here and I know I have three of these domains. So I'm going to click on domains on the left and notice I have manage DNS forward domain and domain settings. I'm going to click on manage DNS because I want to manage the DNS records because the DNS records are the ones that point to wherever it's got to go. So for instance, uh, actually I picked the wrong one. Let me pick <clears throat> the co boom. There we go. And then I'm going to go to DNS and here we are. Now notice here are the records. Now here is a type of record. Here is the name meaning um, we're going to get into that meaning again, pretty much which part do you want to use? Do you want to use a subdomain, which is always the root? That's the root symbol, by the way, the at symbol is the root symbol. And then the data is basically the directions of where you want it to go to. And for instance, in this case, it's parked. We'll go into it a little bit later on as we develop that, but I want to make sure you know that, right? And if I wanted to add a record and we'll tell you which ones to add in a few, I would come in here, select, these are all the different types of record. Again, I would tell it, is it a subdomain that I'm gonna use it? Remember, we're gonna rent a little apartment out or am I gonna use the root? And then the value is gonna be 
basically the address that I'm gonna point it to or the directions I'm gonna give it or the information it needs to store in the value in order for it to be used. And then the TTL is basically how often do I want the server to check it? Layman terms, again, not gonna get super deep into all of these things. I just wanna get you functional, but I wanna make sure you understand. Now, this is GoDaddy. In Namecheap, same thing. I can come in here, we'll go to GHL Camp. I come over here and I go first to manage because I wanna manage this. And then I come in here and I go to Advanced DNS. And lo and behold, it brings me to the same place. But no, it's different. Here, I have to add the button, add a new record. But notice, type, host, value, TTL. Same thing as GoDaddy. Type, name, data, TTL. And it's very simplistic. Here is just when you add a new record, you get to add these records. But instead of hitting a save like you would in here, you're going to go ahead and hit the check mark. Google, same thing. You come in here, you view all your domains. I come in here, select the domain, go over to the left-hand side, hit DNS, boom. And here, looks a little different, but it's the same exact thing. Host name, type, TTL, and the data. So instead of seeing value, it says data. But it's usually the four things you need when you're building out a record. And just like before, if I wanna create a new record, I select the type, I put in the host name, the at symbol if I'm using this one, or I would use a subdomain, remember like the www or the go or whatever you need. And then I would add the value that it would give me. Now, usually the values for pointing things are going to be provided to you by the software because the software has got to give you instructions on how to do it. Now, we saw GoDaddy, we saw Namecheap, we saw Google. Those are usually the three. But what happens if somebody already has a WordPress site? That gets a little tricky. Now, in SiteGround is probably one of the newer ones, but I'm going to go to my account. Inside of there, I'm going to select one of my websites, right? And um, we'll just select, yeah, perfect, automated patient. Love it. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go to Site Tools on um, SiteGround. Bluehost is going to be different. Bluehost, you have to search for it. But again, it's always going to be under some kind of domain, and it's always going to be under some kind of DNS zone editor, editor or a DNS uh, manager. It's going to see either or. And then here, I have to select the domain that I want. And same thing. Notice, here's the domain. I type the record. And here, it just gives me the record, the value that I need because it's already selected the name and it's already got the caching URL preset. But if I wanted to add a C name, you see, it gives me the name that it needs, the caching that it's going to do, and then that it resolves to the value. So same like before, the type, the name, the data. Ready? It's the same exact thing even when you go into the site. The well, this will be the name, the data, and the TTL is already is already there. And the type you're selecting up here. So they're the ones that get a little bit more confusing because when you're working with a Wix or WordPress site, it adds a ton of records automatically without you really doing anything. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to work in here. So this is why when you come in here and you're using either a GoDaddy, uh, I'm sorry, when you're using a WordPress site like SiteGround, Bluehost, HostGator, you're always better off, in our opinion, just buying a secondary domain and GoDaddy or Namecheap and putting a new domain in the funnel. Way easier. And even if you're rebuilding the site because you're trying to get off of WordPress, I would rebuild it in another domain and then move the site over later on because if not this is going to create most problems our biggest troubleshooting problems that we have to do with customers is because of domain issues and nine times out of ten it's because somebody switched the domain over not realizing that they were in a wordpress site now the cool thing about it is if you switch the address of what it was going to is to switch it back and everything should go back to normal inside the wordpress site but it's very important that you understand the difference so you have the different types of how to navigate through remember each one is going to be lo looking differently but you are looking for the same things every time you are going to be able to add records and you're looking for the dns manager and you're looking for domain management of some sort and when you go in there every place is going to have it in a different spot we show you the three core ones but we want to make sure you fully understand that it is literally the same process over and over again so hopefully this helps and we'll see you in the next one